Hello, friends. Yes, sir. Please introduce your names and your. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, your there is an echo in your phone, please. Guys, everyone, keep your phone uh, like reduce the volume of your uh, speakers. One by one, can talk. Uh, first, we will start with Sai. Hello, good morning, sir. I am Sai Kumar. Okay. You are from which place, sir? I am from Eravar uh, Gudam, a place near Visnapeta, Krishna district, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Nice, nice meeting you, Sai. Okay, good morning, sir. I am Sai Bajwada. I am from Vijayawada. You are also Sai from Bajwada. Yes, okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Sai, for being with me today. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am Manasa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Vijayawada, sir. So, oh, Manasa, thank you for being with me today. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am Madhukiran. I am from Mongols. Madhukiran from Mongol. Okay. Thank you very much, Ravikiran, for being with me in this session. Happy to see you. Madhukiran, yeah, next. Sir. Madhukiran, yes. yes sir. Happy to see you here. Anybody else? There is one more. Uh, I see Upendra K. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I thought somebody else. Students, sir. Yes, sir. Upendra K is a very senior faculty member of the Hindu College, Machili Patnam, and our beloved student. Let me introduce, he is doing a excellent work in uh, fine tuning the MBA program of the Hindu College, Machili Patnam. Uma, ma'am, uh, uh, you meet virtually. Yes, Upendra. Upendra is my old student and is holding. Uh, um, associate Professorship in uh, the Hindu College, Machli Patnam. Okay. Uh, and he is one among the uh, five faculty members there, and uh, he is uh, a person of uh, uh, some zeal and uh, what you call uh, enthusiasm, bubbling enthusiasm. He never, uh, you know, quits uh, any assignment that is given to him. And one more thing is uh, he attends every possible, uh, uh, you know, webinar uh, when he finds some time. So, uh, with all of your permission, I invited him to join us today. Um, so, that's how uh, he is here. Upendra, thank you very much for being with me. Uh, thank, um, you. thank you, <laughs> Madam, uh, for inviting uh, uh, me. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we uh, welcome you for the session, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Uh, 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 respected uh, Uma, ma'am. Uh, Myself, I am Dr. D.V. Ramanamurti and uh, of course it's a sort of a homecoming for me. Uh, I worked for Forbes uh, uh, a couple of years back. Uh, almost I was there one year uh, because of the personal reasons and health reasons of my spouse. I had to move out, to, move out from Vijayawada and uh, land in Hyderabad. So I was the Dean for Behavioral Science and the Professor of Management there. Uh, so I had my stint uh, um, at uh, two important uh, uh, institutes of repute. One is the Hindu College Machli Patnam. I was the director MBA program and the principal of the college. And after that, my retirement there, and I was invited to be there on the faculty line of uh, KBN College Vijayawada, Kakarpati Bhavan Narayana College. Most of you might be knowing it. I was the dean uh, for MBA program for uh, six long years six and a half years and after that i joined forbes uh, under the uh, guidance of uh, shiva shakri invited me to be there and uh, unfortunately i couldn't stay for sufficiently longer period of time because i have already told you the health issues of my spouse and wife and i had to uh, leave in between but i had a, a, a very good acquaintance uh, with a lot of students and uh, presently, I am now uh, the uh, the founder director of Attitude Positive Behavior Management Training Solutions Hyderabad. It's my own consultancy, and presently, I am on the visiting faculty of a number of institutions at Hyderabad, um, including uh, uh, Ministry of Power, Government of India, Institute of Power Management and Training, and I am also on the 
faculty list as guest for NIPER, National Institute of Pharma Education and Research, and also on Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Banking in France and certain other institutions. The list is very exhaustive, but uh, I'm, I'm really privileged to have these kind of associations. So with this brief uh, of me, uh, I'm uh, very much thankful for Siva Krishna sir, your executive director and other team of faculty members, Isai Krishna sir, uh, the principal of uh, this great institution and other team of faculty members who are good friends of me. So let's start. See, uh, Ma ma'am, uh, let me share my screen first now. Okay. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir, it's visible. Oh, this is personal SWOT analysis. Is it is it clearly visible? Yes, Other sir, it's clearly visible. Yes, sir, everyone can see it. Okay. Uh, you please check, ma'am, whether the slides are moving or not. Yes, sir, it's changing. Uh, it's the second, third, and all. Okay. Friends, yes, sir, it's changing. Okay, man. Okay, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, it's visible even for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think you are sitting with them only. Huh? Yes, sir, I'm sitting with them. It's like right. if everyone on their mic, it will be an echo problem. So I just gave the answer. Oh, right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I request all of uh, our friends to uh, keep your microphones on mute, please. Uh, because we are on online and uh, any sort of disturbance here and there would mean a lot of inconvenience for all other friends. So uh, I request all of you to un uh, unmute if you want to have anything to share with me. Or if it is any difficulty from your side, you put on the uh, chart. And uh, Uma ma'am, I think uh, you can uh, simply uh, summarize the uh, charts and uh, give me what uh, that is being... Uh, uh, you know, uh, stated or uh, questions that are raised by our friends, student friends here. So kindly coordinate. So this is for yes, the sake sir, of sure. all, uh, look at is, the messages. Yeah, this this is for the sake of all of us to have a very convenient learning online because we need to uh, follow certain protocols. Uh, I think uh, I am right in uh, requesting all of you. It's not a direction, it's a gentle hint for all of us uh, to have a very smooth sail of uh, this learning environment. Thank you for obliging me. So today, the, the presentation which I, uh, I am requested to make to all of you is uh, SWOT analysis, personal SWOT analysis. Uh, you all know you're the students of business management. Do you know what is SWOT analysis? Anybody can uh, unmute and uh, tell me what is SWOT analysis? It's an abbreviation, it's an acronym. Most of you might have heard about SWOT analysis. Sir, SWOT means uh, strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. Like to know about, uh, about ourselves, uh, it is one of the best way. Okay. Okay. So before we talk about this uh, uh, personal SWOT analysis, SWOT analysis is generally used in business organizations mostly. Do we know that? Because personality development experts have borrowed this term SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. It was used to be, um, you know, used by business organizations because they need to keep themselves on their toes in terms of competitive abilities. They need to, uh, you know, continuously redefine themselves in terms of their strengths in the market, in terms of the weaknesses when compared to that of the competitors, and in terms of the opportunities that they have generally in the market to, to swap those opportunities and to diagnose their threats. What is coming in their way in, in, in the process of not projecting themselves 
competitive well in the market. This is how this SWOT analysis has been used by the business organizations. So we borrow this concept of SWOT and apply it to our own honest personal analysis. The reason being, uh, we need to uh, continuously redefine ourselves very honestly. You should be brief, brutally honest. See, because it is analysis of your own. Uh, let's not act hypocritically. You are standing before the mirror, mind it. So mirroring, what do you mean by mirroring? Mirror is all about getting your image as clearly as possible. Of course, maybe little distortions if your mirror is not uh, good enough. So here, you please make your mirror as clear as possible. Look through that mirror and, and diagnose yourself. This is a very bold, honest analysis. And most of us uh, uh, are generally afraid to have this sort of analysis ourselves. And it's easy to analyze others rather than analyzing yourself ourselves as such reasons may be very many or if you would like to analyze yourself you do not do honest analysis and you may have resources myopia you know what is meant by resources myopia for example you have 10 percent resources with you you boast yourself that you have 90 percent resources that's an overestimation of yourself the overconfident postures that may result in uh, some difficulties a little later the second is very pessimistic approach. You have 90% of the resources. You do not know how to present these 90% advantages you have. But then you, uh, you know, uh, diagnose yourself that I have only a 10% of resources. It is this is undermining your undermining yourself. This is a self defeat. Pessimistic. Undermining. So let's not do this. But this tool helps us to understand and make you sure that you need to diagnose very clearly yourself and uh, you know you need to fine tune yourself in the employment market because uh, one good question uh, that you may come across uh, when you are meant when you mean to uh, uh, you know um, uh, going for uh, placements right it can, it can be a summer placement for your projects or uh, recruitment placements the first question, very funny sometimes, uh, it's not a non-routine question. It's not a, again a routine question. Why do we hire yourself? Or why do we hire you? That's a question. Why do we hire you? Why you are to be hired? This is the question very often, uh, the first question. Or else the next popular question is, tell me about yourself. Please note that it is not a routine question of understanding your, I mean, understanding about yourself, like your routine details, like your name and age and your family backdrop and your educational qualification. Everything is made clear in the application itself. But something, uh, there's a lot of depth in that particular question. Tell me about yourself. These two questions, how do you answer friends? Suppose you confront with this question. Why do we hire you? I am, I am your interviewer now and I represent a multinational company and you are on the recruitment roles of my company and I have come for personal interview. My question to all my friends here, five, six friends, uh, why do I hire you? Or tell me about yourself. Can't answer this question only if we know about ourselves. No, your voice is very low. Can you be just here? Yes, sir. We can efficiently answer this question only when we know about ourselves clearly. Right then. Okay. Uh, you know, assuming yourself that you know, how do you answer it right away? It's a real time question. How do you respond? How do you respond? Are you there to respond straight away? Yeah, any other friends, please? Tell me, how do you respond to this question? Yeah. See, you must have, because you need to position yourself, isn't it? Somewhere. 
you need to position yourself and see see what happens is there are n number n plus one number of people in the employment market attending interviews see you must have to position yourself what is your unique selling proposition of yourself just like any other mba or any other pgdm candidate so that's that's not your uh, you know distinctive mark you are going to set for yourself am i clear what i'm saying see we want because you see uh, this is this is nothing to do with your academic richness mind it people with backlogs are also uh, are, are being selected in terms of their, in in terms of their attitudes to learn that's why people often say we hire for your attitude and we train you for your skills that's how the companies are positioned so if you are not academically rich enough it is not mean that you should score uh, uh, 10 out of 10 on your 10 scale or whatever 8 or 9 or whatever I, i'm not I, i'm not discounting your uh, academic uh, achievements and all but your ability to uh, you know spot yourself distinctively different from that of others so you need to have your own mark different footprint is very very important in terms of your positioning are you convinced about this statement please how do you position yourself yes. there are n plus one number of candidates competing so this is the discussion on personal SWOT analysis wherever you want to go no it, it can be for summer placement or final placements or whatever it is so how do you position yourself becomes a big question here see people do not have time to put you to test but you have to yourself diagnose clearly and position yourself in the market am i clear does it make sense for you yes sir uh, does this make sense absolutely it is important for you so this tool my dear friends can help us to understand how to diagnose ourselves how to look at our strengths and how to look at our weaknesses how to look at our opportunities and how to look at our threats and all that and from from uh, from uh, the stage of setting you can convert yourself into a, the best possible human being on the face of the earth I mean, it can be an extreme statement but then uh, relatively important for us to understand that you are supposed to be significantly different from others so how you want to uh, significantly different from others is to scan yourself go for self audit of your resources strengths and all that weaknesses that can help us to understand clear is it clear yes sir uh, this is the prelude with which we start uh, introductory thing now what is SWOT as uh, some of our friends rightly said let's not uh, consume most of the time on this and SWOT is an acronym S is all about strengths and W is all about weaknesses O is opportunities and T is threats see then when when you analyze yourself and your goals using these four elements you can start to separate yourself from your peace see uh, again uh, uh, what are your goals so are you interested in setting your goals so most of us uh, do have uh, an intention to set your goals fine but that's your goal then where you float in terms of your goal achievement so here the term yourself is said to be very very important so there's a need for you to analyze yourself before you being you know uh, chasing a particular goal i mean it can be a career goal or a life goal for that matter so what uh, happens here if you do this exercise it can help you to separate yourself from your competing members and further develop specialized talents this audit requires you to place yourself in a competitive driven environment and you can understand what you have what you do not have and what opportunities you can uh, i mean look at and what is coming in your way in the name of threats so there are two dimensions here setting a goal see for example i can also set a goal to 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 uh, mountaineering and as such and uh, climb mount everest i was not uh, a trekker 
it is humanly impossible for me to have that particular goal. I can make a, a make myself a goal like I should become the next five years. I should become the president of America. Nonsense. Am I clear what I'm saying? See, this is for fun. I'm saying exaggerated things just to make you understand what it means. So you need to uh, say that you did you you need to define your smart goals, practical goals as such. Goals are goals in a way, but if your achievement process uh, requires you to uh, help yourself to audit your talents. So unless you analyze yourself, uh, I mean, uh, goal setting is not at all meaningful exercise. And there is no need for us, for you to think in terms of development of specialized talents because you are not audited at all. So you need to look at the external environment, what, uh, what is being asked there. Do you have these skills or not? This kind of audit honestly must be necessary today because we are heading in a, in a, in a, uh, for a competitive uh, environment today. Nobody has time, my dear friends, uh, to uh, help you to understand what are you. You need to have to make an effort. I, I can't understand what type of a person you are. Five, six people are sitting here along with me. So it is up to you to sell yourself in the market. So you should not undersell or oversell as a matter of fact. You have to sell yourself correctly well in the market. And like that, there are N plus one number of products being sold in the employment market. So how yourself you will be uniquely positioned and what is your unique selling proposition? You know what is meant by USP? Most of the students uh, have this marketing management uh, uh, terminology. What is USP? Sir, it is the uh, unique uh, way of uh, like... Um, yeah, unique selling proposition it is called USP theory. See, especially when you talk in terms of products and services marketing as such, you know, especially product market. So customers will always ask what is there in this particular product. So for example, you are selling a soap cake. There, there are dozens and dozens of soap cakes available in the market. If you now claim yourself through advertising that this is another soap cake I am manufacturing and presenting to the market, people will ask what is this? You must have to define yourself in terms of your unique selling proposition. If you say that I am along with many, uh, you're not welcomed. You better quit the market as soon as possible. Customers will pronounce it. Reason is you 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 are not in a position to define your market presence by your uniqueness. So that is also true in case of personality branding, mind it. So in case where you are branding your products in the market in a stiffly competitive market, just like that you have to brand yourself. Are you there to brand yourself? Yes or no? Are you are you interested to brand yourself in the market? Significantly yes. different from your peers and other friends. Yes, of course. But then, how do you how do you I mean distinguish yourself? So you need to understand uh, clearly your unique selling proposition definition. So this tool helps us to understand. Okay, let's go further. You might have thought about your strengths and weaknesses already, but you may not have identified any potential opportunities or threats. We come to uh, this detailed discussion uh, just now through the process of discussion now. So what opportunities are out there waiting for you to pursue them? Can you tell me what are your opportunities? You're a PGDM student. You may have your own educational background. I don't know what type of, uh, you know, um, plus two and uh, tenth class uh, experience and activities and all that. Uh, your process is through your high school and schooling and college and education. You're now in degree or PG. I don't know. So um, what are your opportunities right now? You're doing a PGDM or MBA program in uh, 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 MPS Business School. Now, what are your potential opportunities? Can you tell me what are your potential opportunities? Sir, jobs. Jobs, yeah. What, op what type of jobs you have? Sir, it depends on the specialization what we take. If we are taking marketing means, uh, will you get jobs according to that marketing field? No, don't, don't go for ifs and buts. You tell me about yourself straight. 
I'm, I'm not interested to cutting short your argument, uh, my dear friend. My, my point is make you uh, clear. You, you just assume yourself with your backdrop. You know, you have educational background, family background, whatever it is. What are the opportunities uh, you have? Potential opportunities, opportunities you have. By the time you, uh, you get yourself ready to the employment market. That's my question. Sir, um, uh, my specialization is financer, so I can I can get jobs in banking sector and any financial sectors. And okay. with respect to that, uh, okay. we have a business, we have a retail shop, cloth store. Uh, okay. I regularly do accounting uh, in my shop, so I have experience in accounting also. So okay. it is very easy when compared to others to acquire jobs for good. me. Very good, very good. Good, good. Other friends, please. What are your potential opportunities identified? Have you identified the potential opportunity you have? So these are based on your strengths and weaknesses. We come to that just now. Yes, sir. I am yeah. a finance specialized student. So yes. I have a very good amount of opportunities waiting for me in finance domain, in okay. bank sector and in other financial institutions also, and also in stock, stock market. Okay, okay, right. Uh, very nice, very nice. And if you want to position yourself for a job opportunity, yes, you said financial institutions are there offering good number of jobs. Yes. Other friends, please. There are other three people who are supposed to interact with me. All of us should interact because there's a small strength, you know, so five, six people sitting. Uh, it's better for us to go in a conversation mode rather than uh, one-way traffic. That helps you also and for me also to have a very fruitful uh, interaction. Yeah, please tell me. Others. Unmute and interact. Yeah, you can't take more than two minutes because it will be wasting my time and your time too. Sir. Please tell me. I'm from marketing specialization. Good. Um, uh, maybe I feel free feel free sure sir i will interact more i will interact with more people from mm -hmm. from outside and my background is hospitality industry okay very good yes, I, I, so oh, we can maybe so we you, can you, you would like to enter into your enter into hospitality industry you know uh, that you will be a best match uh, to uh, enter into hospitality Yes, sir. Like the uh, hotels. Yes, sir. Tourism okay. Sectors. Okay. Yes. Tourism, hotel industry. Yes, sir. Yeah, you have identified two industries where you can place yourself with the with the strengths uh, you have. Very good. Very good attempt. Very good attempt. Right. Okay. Next, please. Hi, sir. Oh, yeah. Hi. I'm in financial specialization. Okay have more interest in financial sector sir okay so i'm waiting for financial opportunity okay okay uh, so most of you i think uh, are uh, ready to get a job in uh, depending upon your specializations we safely assume that uh, uh, these specialized areas in which you are uh, getting graduated can help you to enter into employment market. Very good. Congratulations to all of you. But then uh, are you interested to go for uh, your own business? Only one. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, they their own venture and uh, they want to uh, nourish that particular venture. So the, you, you have an opportunity to have your own business. That's what we call entrepreneurial. Yes, sir, we have, but uh, like, uh, yes, but uh, our like our friends, we decided like like uh, for we have we want to do job for two three years. Later, Good. after having some financial assistance by our own, we want to start our own businesses, sir. Absolutely. So that we can we cannot depend on others like that. We can stand on ourselves. That's our idea, sir. Excellent, Amma. Excellent, and you have a. I mean, you uh, look at the time span and you want to do some business and get back to your own business, uh, right? Right. That's how you define yourself. So that's a good yes. point. And because you see the startups today, young energetic uh, MBAs are coming out uh, with uh, new innovative ideas. Like uh, even uh, a simple restaurant and a 
seaside uh, uh, restaurant also helps you to understand the business potential see it is not undermining anybody and undermining any business as such as long as it is resource generating any innovative idea is accepted today because uh, you may not be interested to do a job so there are uh, uh, choices here of course you can find yourself safely employed in a sector and grow with the career path progression and all that's one side of it second one is having your own that is you should need to uh, convert yourself to be an entrepreneur see each has uh, its own skill set am i clear what i'm saying so uh, depending upon your backdrops and all you need to understand your opportunities next next are threats what will come in your way the what, are, what are the things that are coming in your way in in, in the process of uh, like uh, like uh, an obstacle to reach a goal uh, threats are something like uh, uh, something coming in your way as an obstacle as an obstacle sir over competition uh, over competition is a universal uh, threat you know? the, see you me and I, everybody who is getting qualified is to compete there is no cake walk isn't it today in the market there is no cake walk but there are certain important threats exclusive to yourself competition is one threat yes but how to compete and all that yeah you can you can convert your threat into an opportunity of uh, fine tuning your skill levels and cut down your competition to the maximum possible extent to position yourself uniquely in the employment market with a skill set right skill set am i clear what i'm saying yes sir are you in a position to understand yes sir that's it so this is a scanning exercise here strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats it's not simply for diagnosis it's for converting yourself into a very productive being productive individual in any setting if you want to wish yourself to be so what opportunities are there out there waiting for you to pursue them? are there any threats that could derail your current course of action or on your dream of taking so they can help these questions can really help you to find tune yourself and land in a comfortable setting whether you are an entrepreneur uh, i mean um, you want to wish to be an entrepreneur or a, a career seeker so this session when we pass through we'll focus on the essentials of conducting a personal swot analysis we will look at the tools you need to take quick snapshot of your personal situation and develop a meaningful strategy to accomplish your professional and personal goals around an hour or so we'll be learning a lot now around 40 45 minutes left now identify what makes you stand out and find out how this relates to the opportunities available to you this is a very fundamental point are you sure to have your own way of standing out yourself from the crowd yes or no identify what makes you stand out when compared to that of your classmates or probable uh, competitors of yours in the employment market can you identify yourself and find out how this relates to the opportunities available to you you need to i give you one, one one or two good examples see uh, you are uh, uh, searching for a position where i mean is that marketing or finance whatever it is and for example there's a a customer relationship executive available in employment market so are you best suited for customer relationship executive position tell me customer relationship executive position is available in a multinational company is a good position are you able to find yourself comfortable in that particular position and walk in are you capable of walking in are you sure to have that kind of skill set uh, expected for that particular position of that particular company with your mba backdrop i mean pgd backdrop are you there I, i'll tell you one for example a person uh, who is uh, not sociable enough this is only a personality dimension as such some people are outgoing and some people are 
very very uh, what you should say reserved some people are introverts some people are extroverts so this is a personality dimension so all extroverts who can make friends who can uh, sail smooth in conversations and uh, they are people friendly and they don't find any anxiety level uh, by being with people and these are the best people to because that's the strength you have in people related uh, scenarios uh, people who have a personality dimension of reservedness uh, like uh, you you're too reserved in the sense that uh, uh, you do not mingle freely with people so that's your threat now see the pr problem is that you are too reserved and it, it is an anxiety uh, uh, related uh, issue for you if you want to talk to somebody and mingle with somebody this is only personality dimension if you diagnose yourself here it is something very interesting to uh, convert your your position like introvert to extrovert you should have the ability to socialize yourself am i clear what i'm saying please friends are in a position to understand hello yes sir yeah that's what identify what makes you to stand out if 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 there is any problem this way that way you should be in a position to clearly define yourself and redefine yourself see defining does not mean uh, define yourself and stop there no you have to walk in if you have deficiency plug the deficiency if you have the advantage cash on that advantage that's what sort analysis is all about you jump into an opportunity if you have weakness identify the weakness convert it to, into its a strength if you have a threat external threats are there certain certain external situations of course when you uh, are through this discussion you can be in a position to understand better then understand the threats that your weakness expose you to because for example you are not a conversationalist and you are not good in uh, speaking english for example i'm i'm talking about certain important uh, things like or suppose for example you are not good in uh, calculations you are not good good in uh, computing skills so what will happen so th this is a threat you know so today you just say you are not digital savvy that's a threat clearly see excellent environment wants you to wants you to be computer literate digital savvy suppose if somebody says that i am not in a position to use a smartphone means you have to take a back seat there's never expect any front positions you will become a back seat and eventually quit the environment there is no other alternative because everything now is uh, now we are in industrial revolution industrial revolution 4.0 iot internet of things big data analytics artificial intelligence machine learning so it it, it has engulfed every sector including the management i'm i'm looking at what it means you know when uh, you you just see the threat if you start learning is a clear threat for you and uh, and if you don't learn it's your weakness so how to handle this is a matter so use your swot analysis as a starting point for a solid career and the life plan i'm not presenting a chart here you know the uh, uh, very much you know it's a four quadrant chart like strength weaknesses opportunities and threats i'm not i'm not depicting here because it's too fundamental for all of you to understand uh, i need not have to tell you no how to draw a swot analysis you know in a diagrammatic format yes or no tell me please swot yes sir four quadrant position the square with four quadrants first is the strength second is the weakness and third quadrant is the opportunity and fourth quadrant is the threat you know you need to uh, minimize uh, the threats and weaknesses and you have to maximize strengths and opportunities am i clear what i'm saying your strengths and opportunities must be uh, more and you can avoid threats and convert threats into opportunities and convert your weaknesses after a very clear diagnosis to your strengths so swot analysis is a classic tool that organizations use i have already told you but this is an this is a model you can apply for your career as well to any uh, aspect any other aspect of life for yourself to achieve your goals so this is what just think of it think of it let's see further let's to understand what these things mean for us very often we say strength and strength and strength and whatever 
I have the strength in this and I have the strength in that and all. So the strength, what it means is what sets you apart from others. That's it. The very clear uh, view at strength. Now tell me, all of our friends here, tell me at least, identify at least uh, one or two strengths of your own. Very specific. Friends, let's come out. The first quadrant. Try to fill your first quadrant in your square. Strengths. One or two strengths. Many of us know our own strengths. But we are often reluctant to admit them to anyone. Because you are hesitant. Am I clear what I am saying? Yes, sir. Either you may be uh, too sophisticated and show your modesty that you don't want to exhibit, reluctant to uh, admit your strength to others. Now, if you are hiding yourself under the carpet, know where you float. So, I am not talking about your old confidence levels and exhibitionism and all. See, if you want to show strengths of your own, it does not mean you are exhibiting yourself. Exhibitionism is all about, uh, you know, camouflaging your strengths as strengths. You don't have strength really, but you camouflage that I have this strength and all. Exhibit yourself and you'll be cornered by many if you don't have the real strengths in you. So please understand that if you have a very defined strength of your own, there's no point in, in, in uh, withdrawing yourself because uh, uh, you, you need to demonstrate those strengths specifically find yourself out that i have this right skill set and the strength skill set so for example if a colleague points out how easily you grasp a big picture do you tend to say someone oh for example you make a presentation in a classroom seminar when requested by the faculty and you made a presentation and your friend says fantastic you did a good thing and uh, you know your explanations are quite nice there's an there's a uh, there's an uh, a compliment made by your friend now the question do you accept the compliment and by saying thank you yeah do you acknowledge yourself that you have the strength of presentation presentation skill or hide yourself under the carpet by saying, no, 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 I, I don't have uh, that kind of, uh, you know, presentation skill just like that uh, came out uh, today for me. So if you are doing like that, you are deceiving yourself, mind it. Of course, it does not mean that you have to overinflate uh, your skill or, uh, you know, undermine your skill as a matter of fact. If somebody else is seeing you a uh, particular skill, there's no point in, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, pessimistically. Am I clear what I'm saying? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, it, sir. It's again, uh, it does not mean that you can boast enough by saying, no, no, it is me only who can make presentation uh, clear to the entire class and nobody else on the face of earth has uh, presentation skills like me. This is the, again, it's an overestimation and it is, it is, it is something like uh, boasting yourself and you'll be cut cut to size by many if you boast yourself without really having his strength as such. So my point is what sets you apart is to be identified clearly. That's your strength. It can be X, Y, Z strength in any point of time, in any given setting. You can be a good conversationalist. You can be a good team player. You can be a good, uh, you know, conflict handler. See, whenever you, there's a tussle going on, a conflict going on among the classmates, you're the best person to handle a conflict and uh, bring them to a comfort zone. So you have a well-defined strength. And I mean, uh, by sort of uh, uh, your own experiences, you can identify yourself in terms of your skill set, you know, strengths as such. So what sets you apart? See, it can be a self-definition of yourself or it can come from the peace. While observing, for example, your parents might be telling you, your father might, your dad may say, sir, you are, see, just uh, Mr. Swain, so, yes, sir, uh, sorry, uh, my dear, you are good in this. Why can't you capture on that? So, you can, you can be good in as export or vice sport game or whatever. You can capture on that, I mean, cash on that. Or you are good in debating. 
for example you are good in uh, some x y z trait of yours so this is what it means what sets you apart from others so am i clear what i'm saying that's what strengths so when you fill out strengths quadrant of your swot analysis ask yourself the following questions what i am really good at so can you have an answer to this please what am i really good at what am i really good at at least one at least one or two don't say that i am not i am not good at anything you are too pessimistic of yourself really you might be having some skill float out clearly yeah diagnose clearly don't say that i am not i am not really good at anything at all so when you are not good at anything at all why to come to a public platform hide yourself somewhere so this is not for us right see uh, not for many see you are positioning yourself with your post graduate diploma in management and you are entering into market your aspirations are clear your goals are very clearly set so the question is very clear what am i really good at if you are not good at x y z convert them into uh, your uh, uh, plus whatever minuses you identify convert them into plus through learning through whatever training and learning and development and all so what skills do other people complement me on never ever undermine the compliments from a this minded you might not be knowing what type of a person you are so by participating in a conversation in a game or a uh, in an interview whatever people will uh, uh, you know identify some unique strengths in you and compliment so don't ever uh, ignore those compliment these compliments are honest compliments mind it you can you can easily identify what are the honest compliments coming in these honest compliments my dear friends are your real strengths which can keep you uh, different from others from others so what skills do other people compliment me on or associate me with never ever undermine underline all those things take stock of all those honest compliments from your friends relatives teachers peers and all other people and what do i do what skill do i possess say am i good in computing am i good in english speaking am i good in written communications am i good in uh, x skill or y skill whatever it is so what do i do what skill do i possess now and what what sort of you know best things that i can do with this when compared to the tough peeps your own classmates your own set of people like that it it, it does not mean that uh, uh, you become more content all of a sudden but you try to define honestly yourself see you how to ha- stand on a an honest footing of yourself that can help you to define confidently what type of a person you are that can help you to design your unique selling proposition that's it remember your strengths are inner factors internal factors that are under your control mind it your strengths and the compliments some people might have told you that you are so these are the inner internal factors that should necessarily uh, you know strengthen your um, internal uh, what do you call uh, personality it does not mean that you can have your own inflated uh, uh i mean what you call uh, strengths unnecessarily wrongly inflated things no so consider these things your education background your 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 qualifications knowledge your experience your competency levels that means your abilities your aptitudes your skills and your interests your personality traits and the resources you have uh, when compared to that of others am i clear what i'm saying so you you, you said that there are certain uh, uh, you know areas where you can identify yourself and uh, identify your strengths the first quadrant so then having identified what what is that you want to do tell me what is that you want to do an action plans are very important you just identifying your strength and stop there uh, just to uh, pat your own back by saying yeah very good very good so how many times you know pat your own back 
it's okay it's a, a self motivation but then it should it should come into action right so having identified your strengths brainstorm your strengths and list them in the strength section of your swot and its first quadrant strengths are you able to put down your strength diagram please and you know, all of you i think you can have i think you are all having your own pen and paper with you are you there with pen and paper yes sir yeah please draw out your quadrant quadrant draw out quadrant i hope that you are honestly observing i mean sorry following my instructions uh draw out a diagram with four quadrants it's a square having four quadrants i'm sorry i could not put it uh, here in this slide four quadrants the first quadrant is strength and second quadrant is weakness and uh, the the third quadrant is opportunity and fourth quadrant is threat put it and you know these these four quadrants are equal size right now it's equal size yeah now brainstorm your strengths and list uh, your strengths identified by yourself or through compliments by your parents and friends and peers and certain other people when you confront with different situations all cushion statements you have done a good thing fantastic you are a person of this category and this is the comments uh, compliments that you get so all those uh, you try to brainstorm your strengths and put in the first quadrant list of strengths okay let's go for what sort of learnings you have uh, when you talk about actions don't be shy this is your chance to brag about yourself with no one else is listening don't worry about others i mean again there's a there's a there is what you call a, a disclaimer that means you should not over inflate yourself please note if you want to over over inflate yourself that's your mistake i i was i mean continuously telling you that you sir your self analysis is as transparent as is possible it's your own analysis you your your honor over inflating yourself your skill set means you are deceiving yourself nobody is interested to receive one cent if you still deceive yourself god only can help you so don't be shy this is your chance to define yourself clearly with no one else is listening see your strengths why can't you define yourself in terms of your strength and try to exhibit this strength whenever there is any need that's the tip 1 for learning tip 2 don't limit yourself to the strengths you can widen the horizon that's it you can widen the horizon don't limit yourself to the strengths that you demonstrate in your current role but there are n plus 1 number of associated strengths you can identify list all your strengths that means for example you are a student now in a business school don't limit yourself to the study and all that you are elsewhere in a playground you are a player in uh, some other business competitions you are very good in uh, you know analytical abilities of understanding case studies and help solve case problems hypothetically in uh, case analysis so even the once you don't use it at the moment by being uh, the student of the F, uh, fps business school now but you have you know you identify yourself so uh, tip 2 is that don't limit yourself to the strength up to the given role and given context but you have n number of other strengths you identify in different settings list them out list them out pay particular attention to the skills that your peers do not have that's it very important is because we have already said what are the things that set you apart from others please note that's underlining thing strengths i just would like to again bring back this strength is all about what sets you apart from others find it what set you apart from others so pay particular attention to the skills that your peers do not have how are you different unique and special that's why i've been talking to you with your unique selling propositions alter sorry after you complete this ask people in your personal and professional networks what they think about your strengths are then you can understand match 
their own comments along with your own definitions. Look at the differences between your list and theirs. Go again with an honest analysis. You, you, you should not give unnecessary currency to the critical comments, but at the same time, you should not, you should not ignore the critical comments made by your friends. Sometimes people out of uh, hatred and all jealousy, they may cut you down, but identify those areas of concern. But it does not mean that you have to cut down completely their comments. It's up to you to have a learning point there and need to identify very clearly yourself. What are the strengths you identify yourself and uh, how other persons are telling about you and all. For example, when you attend an interview, then they, the interviewers may give you a very honest comments. So this is not the place for you or something like that. Or it's a very good place for you. This is all. See, I, I, we could identify the skill, fantastic skill in you, they may say. So capture that, cash on that, write down and try to explore. And some people may say critical comments, say this is very bad. See, this is, uh, I did not, uh, uh, we did not expect uh, these things from you. This is a minus. So definitely it is, it is something like a weakness and try to identify where uh, the lacuna is and try to build up uh, on uh, and convert into some sort of a strength or skill, whatever it is. So that's what uh, the strength aspect, as you see. Now, weakness. See, mind it, everybody will have uh, weaknesses. See, this, we are all in a relative setting. See, nobody is a all perfect individual. If somebody says that I'm a perfect individual, he is to be, he is to be branded as a big buffoon in a circus. See, nobody on the face of earth is uh, a foolproof individual, as a matter of fact. But the only thing is relatively, you will be positioning yourself with the skill set in order to make your presence felt in a given setting. Not over optimi optimistically or neither uh, uh, pessimistically as well. So let's see what are our weaknesses. Now, by the time I think the first quadrant, you have filled it, right? Friends, have you written down on the first quadrant your strengths, please? Yes, sir. Hello, other friends? Please do this as honest as possible. Of course, it's, I, you can, I can help you to understand things and uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg, but it's up to you to uh, uh, get in, involved in this exercise because it's a, it's a, a personality uh, development exercise. And it is where you have given one and a half hours for me to help, uh, I mean, myself to help you to understand what these things mean for us. Yeah, please. All of you have done that exercise, please first quadrant field one two three four whatever strengths you have hello friends are you there yes sir uma yes, ma'am am i on the right track oh uh, yes sir no, thank you like there the pen and the paper they are working on it fine 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 okay so next comes your weakness and as i've already told you don't worry too much about your weaknesses and we are prone to the, uh, and list out as many number of weaknesses as possible. Don't worry about it. Every many, everyone has weakness. And usually they are nothing to do to be ashamed of, mind it. See, you're not good in English communication. Does not matter much. You're not good in, uh, you know, handwriting. Does not matter much. Don't feel shy. Today, there is no something like uh, writing on pen and paper because everybody uh, is using a computer and you have a word processor. Now, if you do not have uh, sufficient vocabulary and, uh, you know, you often have uh, the spelling mistakes uh, when you write, don't worry because the word processor has got a spell check facility and it gives you right meaning and right spell and all. See, this is, this is only one side of the story I'm telling because don't worry too much because there are N number of opportunities for you to help yourself convert your weaknesses into strengths by training, learning and development. Only thing is you should have the bent of mind to learn. And you should have uh, the transparency of your own honest analysis. So the, the weaknesses can hold you back from achieving your goals. Yes, understandable. But you have the power to work on them. Yes. And improve your situation. Are you there? Are you convinced about it? Sure, that weaknesses hold you back. They, they, they drag you. They drag you to, uh, you know, uh, in the process of reaching your goals. You find it imp impediments. Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand. My understanding levels are not good enough. And my writing skills are not good enough. My speaking skills are not good enough. 
my analytical skills are not good enough my the, i have just no don't have any creativity skill that's uh, thinking outside the box these are all the issues everybody will have mind it but you have the power to work on them do you have the power to work on them honestly yes or no it's a you should necessarily have the power you have to work on them to improve your situation mind it don't worry too much about your situations and cry see i am not i am a misfit here i don't want uh, this uh, situation anymore and uh, you know let's not curse ourselves everybody has their own weaknesses mind it however if you try to downplay your weaknesses you risk setting yourself unrealistic goals mind it that's what i have been telling you resources myopia don't overestimate your uh, you know resources i mean if you have only 10% for resources i don't wish that you should have only 10% of resources and all but my, this is only an example mind it it is not uh, you know undermining anybody in 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 our friend circle right now uh, interacting my question and my my proposition is like this if you if you say that i have 90% of resources uh, you are overestimating yourself that means again you do not recognize your weaknesses am i clear what i'm saying if you try to downplay your weaknesses if you don't you don't recognize that it, uh, there's a weakness in you you are deceiving yourself you risk setting yourself unrealistic goals you can't achieve because you are setting an unrealistic goal without going for an efficient honest audit of yourself what are your weaknesses see if you think that you are not a good uh, uh, speaker in english you can't aim at a public speaking uh, individual right you can't make a straight away uh, you know uh, participate in uh, presentation skills you can't give a ted seminar some some seminar in x place y place because you are not good enough in presentation skill i don't wish that it should happen but then i i'm i'm trying to look at it so try if you try to downplay your weaknesses you will be setting unrealistic goals so setting unrealistic goal is a suicidal attempt so you should have to clearly uh, work out a realistic goal based on your uh, things so by knowing about your weaknesses you can either work to eliminate or manage them if they damage your goals definitely they damage your goals if you do not identify it will definitely damage your goals at the end of the day uh, sorry what what was happening to me it is happening to me it is happening to you like that because you are uh, don't playing your weaknesses so to avoid certain situations where they can harm you and where uh, they do not damage your goals you have to be precise enough in identifying your weaknesses so come on to the next quadrant please it's your homework now it's your work now come on to the second quadrant weakness write down 1 2 3 weaknesses you have please nothing to be ashamed of let your paper be your own you need not have to show it to anybody neither your faculty nor your friends not your friends what is holding back from achieving your goals till today because you have lot of goals lot of uh, life uh, is there for you but till till til today and what can uh, uh, i mean uh, what uh, what for you to improve your own situation right done think about following when you complete weaknesses section of your sort analysis the second quadrant questions for us to uh, highlight on the knowledge of what weaknesses are all about uh what do you lack that others around you have when compared to others where do you stand what is that you are lacking what could you do better many of us are masters of deception mind it all of us we act instead of saying i don't have this i often say i do have this this is too much self deception is disastrous most of us are masters of deception 
we cover up our weaknesses and hide them from others this is suicidal we are we are in a transparent society minded the skills are being tested there are professional uh, tests that are now made available to test every skill of your own in an unbiased fashion you no no way you can hide yourself mind you. even if other people do not know what your weaknesses are you should know it you will have to identify please note that can be a uh, your own concern uh, if you do that honest analysis it's up to you to develop where where not to where to enter where not to enter so let us not go for self deception this is completely suicidal mind it there is nothing wrong in defining your weaknesses everybody will have why to worry don't feel shy but because you can you can improve upon those things after all this is only a self analysis right so what do you receive consistent criticism for yes don't don't again undervalue underestimate criticisms sometimes something uh, sometimes you know you have a big blows on your faces does it matter for, for example sometimes uh, uh, unparliamentary comments uh, will be there and very very uh, uh, you know sometimes uh, very rude comments uh, maybe uh, from your faculty or frame, maybe from your classmates or maybe from your peers or maybe from your parents and all depending upon certain uh, the skills you do not have right am i clear what i'm saying so what do you what do you receive uh, consistent criticism consistent criticism that means very often they say that you are not good at this you are not good at this your parents say your peers say your classmates say and your uh, you know uh, uh, faculty say consistently number of times please do take cognizance of those criticisms these are not uh, you know infrequent criticisms infrequent criticisms you can avoid but consistent criticisms mind it that means you are having some weakness there no do you have any habits or characteristics that plague you at work or at home yeah it is sometimes you have a unnecessary habit and some characteristic where you, which may come in uh, uh, come in clash with your work environment or home environment of learning for example somebody is uh, i mean uh, uh, what do you call uh, having uh, 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 an addiction towards your computer or laptop or a smartphone it's eating away and your too much uh, time spent on your social media i mean it, it does not mean that you should not be uh, you know in a social media and networking and all but is this networking productive or not is very important for you at this point of time because you are you have to seek a job and learn yourself well and i mean establish yourself significant when in a employment market and you have to define yourself in your skill sets and all so uh, uh, identify any habits and characteristics of your own which are coming in the way of your uh, your work and home and uh, time consumption and uh, it is hitting uh, learning and all that identify areas of concern very many what other people see as your weakness of course they may tell you uh, in sort of criticisms but best friend is who give us a very uh, fair criticisms criticisms uh, it is very difficult to swallow criticism but please try to honor them it's a very important personality trip tip here that you have to give give cognizance to um, honest criticisms honest criticisms come from real friends mind it what do other people see as your weakness sometimes you may not get criticism straight but you can identify what other people are thinking about me you should be intelligent enough in capturing the clues that come from am i clear what i'm saying so that's it so by this time i think uh, you might have uh, answered all these questions and listed 1 2 3 as your weaknesses have you done that please second quadrant filled second quadrant filled please hello second quadrant filled so why can't you answer me yes sir i don't know whether it is my weakness or your weakness are not answering me 
sir uh, due to technical issue internet issue we were unable to answer oh, first okay 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 uh, right right uh, don't worry don't worry too much uh, let, let's be honest right okay okay uh, uh, now let's go for learning see your action is uh, very important so fill in the weakness section of your SWOT analysis that can help you understand what are the weaknesses you have uh, because these are all mean uh, uh, means of improvement as such it's not a uh, self cursing see that should not again uh, uh, you know uh, downsize yourself no don't worry too much about your weaknesses and and don't don't worry too much that uh, i mean don't worry uh, too much of cursing yourself as uh, see oh my god uh, why should i uh, be born here and why should i enter into this why should i enter into that it's my mistake and i have to uh, don't worry too much about this and by cursing yourself mind it these are the areas of improvement and plus one number of strategies are made available for you to help yourself get yourself trained if you're say for example if you're uh, having a person of anxiety you can talk to your personality development expert how to get out of your stress and anxiety levels as such like that you have n number and internet is the best source for you to uh, get guided get guided by number of uh, uh, through number of learnings so let's go in for some learnings here tip one be brutally honest about your weaknesses minded i have already been telling you you should be honest enough nobody else is there to pick your sheet and treat no need and nobody has some time to look at your own weaknesses it's up to you you can only change what you acknowledge for yourself minded whatever you have acknowledged to yourself that is the that is the point where you can change and this is the perfect time to get real with yourself i have been talking to you n number of times throughout the discussion that you should be as honest as possible don't deceive yourself at the same time don't beat yourself up over really small stuff don't undermine don't undersize yourself see everybody will have weaknesses mind it there's only a i mean difference in degree me you x y z it is it helps us you know drawing out uh, uh, points in terms of weaknesses may mean here that you define yourself in terms of the weaknesses to redefine yourself uh, to help check and convert the weaknesses into strengths through learning development don't ever curse yourself get real self get yourself real self that's it tip 2 ask yourself where you are vulnerable see there are certain risks uh you will be facing you are vulnerable you are you are, you are getting affected so the, 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 let's not enter into that for example you are not good in uh, uh, outdoor games as such so never ever get into outdoor games unless you uh, train yourself well like that you identify ask yourself where you are vulnerable are there areas of your life where you would be totally exposed to negative effects if something went wrong identify why something went wrong what are the negative effects can i avoid these negative effects if you can't avoid negative effects let's not expose to that let's not expose to that am i clear what i'm saying so your weaknesses uh, where are the areas of concern where you are vulnerable and what are the negative effects where are you going wrong these things are of uh, some importance to us and uh, right down and tip 3 finding out what others think is really important here because even the most honest of us will tend to downplay our own weaknesses very very important again i repeat you are supposed to master yourself in terms of define yourself my dear friends repeatedly i'm saying because it's a swot analysis is your own analysis of self let's not deceive especially when you're working on weaknesses there is a tendency to downplay and when you're working on strengths you there's a tendency to overplay on that you have only three strengths and i write down i have 12 strengths just like that you have 12 weaknesses 
there is a tendency to downplay and say i have only three weaknesses see so left to your own inner conscious please define yourself clearly so by this time i think you have completed the list of weaknesses to the second quadrant yes friends okay yes sir let's go for the opportunities you have yeah see everybody will have an opportunity only thing is you have to realize the and where to go where not to go so what is possible do you think that everything is impossible or everything is possible tell me what is this possibility point can you tell me yes sir everything is possible everything is possible if something is possible for x can it be possible for y when x and y are the same i mean on the same setting or same footing yes or no when when something is possible to x yes, can it be possible to y also when x and y safe assumption is that x is equal to y x is yourself and y is your y is your classmate if y is able to gain an advantage does it mean that you can also gain an advantage uh, or does it, uh, uh, or not tell me yeah it is so the possibility there is nothing like it is impossible i mean there are certain issues like see i want to uh, go to uh, you know planet uh, sun and all these these, these are all the uh, nonsensical uh, goals that you would like to uh, you know make out unrealistic goals nobody is interested in unrealistic goals right? you'll be pointing yourself and in terms of a realistic goal so in terms of realistic goal you need to identify your opportunities see cashing on your own strengths identifying your weaknesses and convert them into uh, uh, strengths and what are the threats external threats you can identify and cut it, cut it down and then uh, convert them into opportunities an opportunity is an external or an internal event tend or change that you hope to take advantage of in the future so everybody i'm well, sorry trend or change that you hope to take advantage of in the future please note that you are a future individual so you are a you no know, ongoing personality see you would be learning things and you went because these are the socialization phases right uh from uh, birth uh, you are being socialized in the family and you try to understand the values i mean your mom and dad and extended family members nourish you and you have some value systems learning etc the, the, the next socialization phase is you enter into schooling and that's why we say a uh, good school is important good external environment is very important and your uh, peers and that means your classmates and your class teachers and environment uh, uh, which you enjoy in schooling will make you x y z and then you enter into i mean through uh, uh, normally through schooling and your primary school and high school and all then you enter into college uh, right you are a teenager then and you have another environment your classmates and class teachers and then we we want to have your uh, primary and uh, secondary sex characteristics uh, develop and you are a girl and you are a boy and then you are an adolescent boy or an adolescent girl and a lot of things take place and after being getting educated the next situation is getting into a job and when you are getting into a job x organization y organization then you are having a gov governed environment and governed environment you are working with people right you have a hierarchical structure of working with boss subordinate peer right and uh, you have a team of people working with and next co comes next socialization is getting married of course options are there if you want to get married you can get married or become a, a sole survivor that's okay but normally uh, the convention is that the second next socialization is getting married when getting married yes you have um, another uh, person walking into your life your spouse and spouse and their family members so you have a redefined uh, uh, roles set now expectations you have your own father mother and you also have your mother in law father in law you have brother sister here you have brother in law sister sister in law and you have your uh, spouse maybe husband or wife or whatever and there are certain set of demands and uh, that's a lifetime like, like that you have different sets of socializations you have a uh, lot of things there are external and internal things and there are certain trends or changes that take place and through this journey uh, you are a you are a future individual automatically yeah 
so write down what are those things think about the following to identify possible opportunities in your professional and personal life what is that you are good at it's not the strength but futuristically what is that i uh, i can look at and what is that possibility given the strengths what is the possibility am i clear what i'm saying what is the possibility because in future you have something because you you learn a lot of uh, software packages and all you know you want to enter into I mean technical skill i mean to say so you want to enter into xyz uh, somebody is saying no i am i mean uh, uh, getting trained in my own uh, you know shop or whatever i am interested in uh, you know accounting and all and i mastered it and trying to master it after getting a job for 2 3 years and the futuristic is the idea is that uh, yes i can take charge of my own business and i can help others also to uh, work with me so this is what it means including the personal life or professional life as such how can you turn your strengths into opportunity very important is that you know you have the mark the strengths of your own so that can help you to look at the future possibility not impossibility future possibility you can cap on the strengths which can which can help you to make things happen possible in near future how can you create opportunities by enhancing your strengths yes nobody on the face of earth will have a welcome feature mind it you yourself have to project in the in the market in a given setting by creating an opportunity for example there is an open invitation from the university like there is a business uh, meet going on and uh, seminar presentations are there that is only an opportunity for you to make yourself uh, felt so if you are interested yeah go you have a strength of presentation skill participate in the competition presentation competitions business presentation competitions seminars and win a prize it you can make proud yourself and make your institution business school proud enough so this is what it means create an opportunity by enhancing your strength you have a strength future opportunity is there go and get grab nobody is there to invite you personally minded nobody has got any time how can you create opportunities by enhancing your strengths how can you create opportunities by managing or eliminating your weaknesses that's another important thing by looking at future possibilities and impossibilities by this time i think you would be in a position to look audit yourself and say these are the weaknesses i should get rid of this weakness yes how can you create opportunities by managing or eliminating your weaknesses you should have to necessarily think in terms of eliminating your weaknesses that is the thing uh, uh, the purpose of why we draw in the second quadrant weaknesses futuristically looking at uh, your uh, presence then there's a chance for you to eliminate your weaknesses that's how you look at an opportunity by eliminating a weakness you will be you will be looking at a possible opportunity yeah what is happening in your organization or in, in your periphery whatever you call that may provide an opportunity for you where i can stand myself given the organization parameters given the situation given the employment market what is happening because it's all futuristic look at always what is possible don't don't look at what is impossible don't don't be under the negative aspect of it you have your own inner strengths and you have some weaknesses cut down the weaknesses eliminate your weaknesses cash on the strengths and position yourself where it, uh, you become a possible uh, advantage in the market so that's what <clears throat> opportunities let's see uh, what's happening in the industry or the employment market right now in the in the employment market that you have had your eye on for a while are there any general political economic technological demographic and social trends that you can take advantage of yes see the business environment undergo change political environment changes economic environment changes technological demographic changes are taking place population etc social trends that emerge here for example your networking so because of the advantage you have with regard to networking uh, atmosphere you can develop professional networking groups i do not know how many of you use social media do you have whatsapp uh, use of whatsapp please yes or no how many of you have facebook account yes, all of you i think you know right hello how many of you are there yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I did not mention all of you. How many of you have uh, uh, account in Instagram? I'm having sir. Oh. Everyone. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Okay. How many of you have uh, got an account registered in LinkedIn? Everyone. Everyone sir. Very good. Very good. So you find, you know, especially in LinkedIn, uh, when you would like to try up with your own professional groups, you know, n plus one number of experiences that are that are presented. So that's what we mean. So there are a lot of changes that are taking place. We are unfortunate guys of Esther generation. If we didn't have the exposure to have this kind of uh, networking facility. Am I clear? So we don't have Google. We have to sit a larger number of hours in libraries to help ourselves to uh, get the resources from texts. Texts only. That's all. Texts and monographs. Now, internet is the best friend of yourself. And the, uh, see, the, the, the brilliant, uh, uh, what you call resource provider. How many of you spend time on Googling? Right? Internet search. Not for uh, dirty stuff. So like uh, research papers and your own interests and all, you know. So this is, this is what we call. We are also talking oh, about yeah. that. We are not dirty. Yes, yes. When you, are, when you are given assignments and all, and you'll be going into uh, browsing internet and all. See, why I'm saying this, there is a lot of changes that are taking place and you can take advantage of these things. You have virtual platforms today. And how many of you are interested in doing a little, uh, you know, extended learning by looking at self certifications, right? Related certifications, right? You have N plus one number of opportunities today, online learning. You need not have to quit your domestic environment, sit with your computing system and get every resource uh, on your desktop. With a mouse click, you can operate. Learning environments are made possible. This is our future. So do any changing circumstances in your personal life present an opportunities for you to capitalize on. Think there are certain situations where sometimes dramatic things happen in your personal life, which can give you a cushion, some surprising result. So then you can think of, oh, can we capitalize this on? There's a marked advantage you might have found out through the personal life event. So you can capture that and then capitalize on that because futuristically are you working on any goals that will provide opportunities once you have uh, accomplished them. See, there are certain opportunities differently are there. Are you working on any goals? They're very important. Futuristic goals, smart goals. There should be smart enough. They should be the goals must be measurable. The goals must be rational. Am I clear what I'm saying? So are you working on the any goals? So reaction must be spend few minutes of brainstorming on your opportunities using the X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three bullet points. Starting point one, two, three, four, five. I think by this time you might have uh, looked at uh, filling up the third quadrant, the opportunities you have. Have you done that exercise? That is one, two, three, four opportunities listed. Yes, sir. Right. Next, coming on the last one, threats. What stands in your way? Have you ever identified what are the stumbling blocks you have by this time? One or two at least. It's high time for me to get... Um, uh, I, I need to listen from you. Unmute and tell me what stands in your way by this time. One, two, three. See, you might be having, you know, your success plan. Nobody is there to be now, uh, you know, hatchy patchy in uh, uh, goal settings. So you define your own goals and you plan for your own success. That's how you join PGDM program and you have, you know, a lot of plans uh, so far as careers are concerned and all. So uh, at this given point of time, just stop here. At this given point of time, uh, tell me what stands in your way. What is your sir, stumbling block? Uh, sir, ultimately, I want to start a business. 
good uh, uh, so my threat is uh, financial assistance like uh, i have to grab financial assistance for that uh, this is one of my threat because i don't have finance okay good okay and later uh, for uh, business we want uh, employees and uh, everything like yes. administration yes. um choosing them effectively is also a threat because we have to do lot of research in it yes so does it mean that you have to quit uh, uh, your entrepreneurial uh, expectation no sir we have to practice and like we have to try but absolutely. we should not quit absolutely because you have the, you have done some sort of homework see your opportunity is that you know you you see yourself as an entrepreneur for the next century isn't it for the next decade at least for the next decade am i clear so you think that uh, something coming your way is to plan for finance plan for your required human resource and all do you think that uh, there is a lot of uh, incentives that are given for startups and lot of financial institutions uh, giving you financial assistance and business consultancy organizations are there you have to pay little money and get involved in your uh, business ideas generated and finances generated so why do you think that it is coming in your way am i clear what i'm saying looking at the brighter side of the thing see not that everything is made uh, very clear to you but uh, i i understand that there is a threat what stands in your way now it, it, if you would like to scan the environment get involved get involved in 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 uh, analyze, analyzing analyzing uh who are the institutions available what are the institutions available to fund and who are venture capitalists venture capitalists that high risk businesses some people are there interested to interested to uh, you know invest in your business only thing is you have to pitch to the investors pitching to the investors you know you have to make yourself clear crystal clear you know business objectives come to me sir this is my business proposition you are uh, can you be uh, in a position to invest in my business so what stands in your way is a stumbling block uh, can be converted into an opportunity provided that you do some sort of homework am i clear ama are, are you clear yes, about uh, this yes, uh, proposition yes sir threats have the potential to jeopardize your success yes let us not so let them not jeopardize your success having identified those uh, blocks you can sometimes control sometimes you can't control for example there are certain excel business scenarios uh, and all that all of a sudden that business class uh, has gone out of gear and all you can't do anything like that because there is there may be an industrial policy changes there are some factors which are left beyond your control for example this pandemic for example so that's a global thing and which is beyond our control that led to uh, so many business failures so we never ever over dramatize on that and so how many number of pandemics we have to see see the pandemics will come and go that's okay but now we have a learning that what how to handle these pandemics how to get protected uh, our results uh, from the health point of view and uh, uh, from the business point of view also how to handle for example you know we have never stopped learning so once you have uh, this pandemic which is on that's a clear threat globally what went on you see what business models uh, that were emerging yeah that emerged what business models every industry talked in terms of working from home am i clear and you and uh, you and me did not stop learning we are uh, attending to webinars and we are exchanging ideas and you know the, the knowledge acquisition did not stop the only thing is the, the 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 available technology you have to explore am i clear what i'm saying so threats have the potential to jeopardize your success let them not jeopardize your success so try to look at them and neutralize them so that they don't cause your harm you harm as long as you know about them in advance even of course pandemic is not looked at in advance of the second wave and we are now almost ready in the third wave and likely i mean third wave is also over like omicron um, you know threat and now uh, from june on uh, people say that we, we may be subjected to fourth wave and other side of the globe uh, they are experiencing it 
but uh, people here health uh, management experts here say that it is not a wave but it is something like an uh, something like cold and cough it goes away just like uh, any influenza fever so we we we're, we're getting ready so like that threats can be uh, identified obstacles can be identified and 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 you can answer them so uh the, the key uh, to filling in this threat section of your swot analysis coming out of the fourth quarter uh, to be able to uh, uh, understand spot the threats you face without worrying excessively about things that are not likely to happen see sometimes what happens is we overthink on the threat we overthink on the threat see what was happening when uh, the second wave is on uh, most of the people have suffered with a fear psychosis see i may be getting an infection see when you have this uh, i mean uh, over anxiety of getting an infection idea your immunity will go down to the lowest ebb and you get infected most of them died because of fear psychosis not because of the infection to find the details from the hospitals health management experts don't fear fear psychosis so is it possible or not this is again another question but see the threats are always uh, 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 looked at in a in a in a over proportion so it is uh, something very important for us stop worrying and start working stop worrying excessively worrying does not you end up with uh, inaction stop worrying and start action on your threats Uh, threats can come from many different angles so look closely at what you hope to accomplish and the list as many things that can go wrong as you can think of yeah things can definitely go wrong why not see everything is not in your own hands because you've been guided by environmental considerations especially threats means external environment external environment mostly so remember a threat is only a dangerous if you don't address it yes exactly hey, see see if you see for example uh, you are experiencing tremors tremor tremor you know what is meant by tremor tremor and earthquake tell me yes sir for example you are experiencing tremors so what, what that's a signal right it's a threat all tremors may not lead to earthquake that's a different story but when you experience a threat a I mean, threat of a tremor what to, how do you respond how do you respond please all of a sudden there's a there is a tremor under our um, under our feet tremors 2 seconds 3 second tremors are there what's your solution to that you definitely run away from that scenario because uh, you know tremors will normally be followed by quick am i clear what i'm saying hello are you there yes sir yes so uh, a threat is only dangerous uh, dangerous if you don't address it see if you at the tremor stage itself you need to address otherwise you have to invite uh, a big uh, a problem quick only after a tremor so i'll tell you what it means so no, in in a business scenario i'll give you an example some time back you know hindustan unilever hindustan unilever is a detergent giant they were manufacturing detergents and and soap cakes and uh, like that you know bath soaps and detergents and all so hindustan unilever's uh, popular brand name uh, surf is scoring very well in the market no uh, all of a sudden there was a market tremor nirma chemical works nirma entered the fold of uh, uh, the competition you know nirma chemical works nirma nirma have you ever yes, seen sir. nirma yeah nirma nirma is a technically poor product when compared to that of surf now when nirma entered and with extraordinary uh, jingle product song right have you ever heard of nirma girl you know dancing and you know, yes sir nirma uh, jingle in telugu it said uh, uh, palalonchi telupu nirmato vachindi something like nonsensical statement palalonchi telupu nirmato raadu that's too much of a thing right but an uh, extraordinary advertising 
so what was happening uh, no, no, my question to all of you should hindustan uli lever consider it as a threat or not nirmas markets were significant enough their plan I mean they have taken head on hindustan uli lever with nirma product now the question number 1 should it be a threat for hindustan unilever if you if you want to be uh, the marketing head of hindustan unilever what's your strategy nirma entered it it's creating vibrations through advertising and most of the housewives are interested to buy nirma because it's it's uh, on on price front it is uh, cheaper on price front it is cheaper so it is creating it, it is created a price competition it has created a price competition it's a threat some business scenario i'm talking about uh do you think that uh, uh, as a marketing head leading a marketing team do you consider it as a threat tell me how oh, don't, yes, sir. don't yes, sir. threat or threat ka kada threat sir threat na threat ka adanna anukonde apdi avutne Hey, after all, uh, some people will come and some people will go. We have a market share. No, no, it may happen. You know what was happening? You know the 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 data is uh, 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 very clear that it it is eating away the markets of surf. Please note again, I repeat that Hindustan Unilever surf is a superior product when compared to that of Nirma. But yet, because of the new uh, in, uh, entry into the market with a significant market uh, differential on price front it has created a tremor if hindustan uli lever uh, uh, cannot treat this as a threat it cannot convert this threat into an opportunity so what they did is they have redefined their surf they have designed redesigned their surf repositioned their surf as surf extra surf ultron this that there is a lot of additives in the surf and want to sustain the markets in spite of the fact that nirma is threatening so now nirma is nowhere and nirma was almost out of the market and still hindustan unilever is sustaining its markets is is, is maintaining its markets so tremor after tremor if you ignore a tremor it will result in a quake so just like that for your positioning yourself please note that you if you if you uh, do not consider a threat you will only uh, land up uh, in not addressing the, addressing it after so a threat is only dangerous if you don't address it as long as you don't address it you become a big 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 problem you assume this is a big problem so there are always strategies for you to answer these threats so you are being proactive and taking control of your success please note that you need to identify the threat and convert this into opportunity if you don't recognize that it is a threat you are in a soup mind it threats are threats in a way there may be a little threat or a bigger threat or much more bigger threat who knows a little later it may be a, a small threat which is ignored will become a bigger threat and much more bigger threat for yourself anywhere you function so uh, that's what is a threat now by the time i think you are ready to find out your list on the fourth quadrant ask yourself the following questions what obstacles do you face now are your classmates peers doing things that you haven't started yet do you have hesitated to start x y z uh, uh, ideas and things but your peers have already advanced themselves in doing 1 2 3 4 5 or any one of your weaknesses significant enough to threaten your overall success some weaknesses i mean uh, which we can't address are becoming uh, uh, threatening scenarios for overall your success so identify these three simple questions can address your threats i mean listing out i think by this time you might have filled your fourth quadrant on threats now the action the action plan for you is now spend few minutes filling the last section of your personal swot analysis including threats and now 
you have four quadrants filled. One is strength, second is weakness, third is an opportunity, fourth is threat. Now, what to do with this sheet? What to do with this four quadrant diagram? Are you interested to move into action? Yes. All through what we say, I just would like to conclude with an given time it is almost it is uh, oh, oh my, sorry 1151 uh now that you have completed your SWOT analysis friends your final step is to list the actions that you will take very important is to move action after the diagram is over next page go to the next page this is your action page this is what makes the whole exercise worthwhile to moving to action just keeping track of yourself audit yourself is no point stop stopping there to audit yourself is no point you need to go for your course connections corrections course correction if you don't have the ability to uh, correct your course of action see your ability to go to uh, for course of action is made uh, is made possible only once you go for an audit audit is something like your SWOT analysis so spend about 10 to 15 minutes working through the opportunities you have identified list your interesting opportunities because we we mostly corner on strengths and opportunities weaknesses can be converted into strengths threats can be converted into either strengths and opportunities so this SWOT analysis can help you a lot on uh, uh, defining and redefining yourself always you have to redefine yourself given these settings because you'll be a full function human being in different 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 settings settings today are different from settings of yourself tomorrow you are a bachelor now you are a family person next you are a student here you are a working individual next you are a, a x here and you are y somewhere am i clear what i'm saying you are an individual employee at a lower level today and tomorrow you may be a, a boss you may be a boss now or you may be something like an entrepreneur next like that so let's have a quick brush up of what uh, learnings we have with this we close and open uh, uh, for any question and answers for me at least for five minutes to close our uh, key learning points we have uh, you can use this uh, personal SWOT analysis to see you see yourself clearly very important it helps you to bear all and look closely at what makes you unique including your weakness you have to bear all the things that come out mind it because it's your own uh, audit sheet mind it your own audit sheet don't worry too much and at the same time don't don't again ignore a SWOT analysis is designed to help you to understand what and where you do well and to identify your shortcomings and it shows what's your you're going on in your external environment what is going on in your external environment that can potentially help or hurt you? Uh, there are certain uh, external environments that can give you cushion or that can that can signal dangers. Identify by uncovering this information, you can help yourself a lots and lots of things to going good. In a planning setting, you can start thinking through a, a personal strategic plan and use it to your advantage. The, the strategy comes only once you're ready with the plan. Your plan is ready only when uh, you answer what to do. Your question what to do depends on what strengths you have, weaknesses you have, what potential threats you have and opportunities you have. So from that worksheet, you have the question what to do. And then next question is plan. With plan, uh, you should have a focused thinking like you should have a strategic plan strategy and a view home and down now that's what a personal strategic plan uh, must be made ready and use it to the maximum possible advantage so this is a useful framework my dear friends for anybody for that matter for student for a housewife for a manager for a father for a son whatever depending upon your own individual objectives with which you are setting in and it has been used as a uh, tool for many many years it's very simple, but at the same time, complex enough in the process of understanding and action orientation. Completing this analysis in a personal context allows you to take advantage of it as a useful tool and start 
marking out a satisfying direction in your career mind it this is a closing point which i would like to make so never ever suffer from a fear psychosis never ever suffer from inflated uh self please honestly diagnose yourself and this tool can help us to understand a four simple square with four quadrants if you're honest enough sit down calm and quiet and of course uh, get clues from wherever you are your friends relatives parents i mean i mean i mean faculty members and excellent environments and and, and all other uh, uh, through conversations from different sectors of people and your own experiences all these things count a lot in uh, building up this friends and where you can help yourself out so with this i close thank you profoundly uh, the fbs business school uh, siva krishna the executive director and uh, other members of the faculty especially sai krishna garu the principal and uh, subalakshmi ma'am and the faculty member and such as sir i don't know how many of us uh, how many new members are there uma madam who is very very uh, patiently listening and coordinating this program uh, now it is time for you to interact with me for uh, at least a couple of minutes please a quick brush up of uh, your own feedback uh, whether you like the program or not uh, that can help me to fine tune uh these programs it is well because this is a well designed program what we did in uh, uh ICBM business school and githam university mba programs in their uh, campus recruitment training and shri is very well and lot of applause for this kind of presentation i am not great for the this presentation but uh, make you understand uh, your own uh, you know self clearly so this is a beautiful tool <clears throat> extremely beautiful tool for all of us to understand clearly and there's a self check sheet How many of you dare enough to check yourself honestly? We all are ready, sir. Very, Actually, very we good. already tried, sir. Very good, very good, very good. The only thing is that you have to systematically sit down and try. And after all, uh, you need not feel feel shy. Again, I repeat, it's only your own fact sheet, mind it. You need not have to show to anybody for that matter. But again, you have a reflective thinking into those areas. you should have to go for reflective thinking realistic reflective thinking mind it never over inflate and never undermine yourself you are a beautiful individual on the face of earth lot of potential for growth and prosperity people always accept you organizations are you are for you only so there are there's a good saying people are for organizations or organizations are for people can you tell me what what comes first people are for organizations or organizations are for people people are for organizations <laughs> people are for organizations yes you get yourself trained in walking to the organizations organizations without people is dissimilar so organizations want you to help solve a number of problems so how to fine tune yourself define yourself define your unique selling proposition statement your distinctive statement your brand statement are you clear about yourself that's very important so that can make you uh, conveniently answer the first question why should we hire you tell me about yourself so this uh, uh, analysis can definitely help you to understand yourself clearly in terms of external environment and internal environment so provide the checks and balances here so over to uma ma'am for coordinating it, uh, the question and our session or whatever I mean, quick feedback i would like to listen to them uh, at least uh, a couple of minutes sir actually yes ma'am so, so tell me tell me who is that sir mansa sir ah uh, mansa tell me please sir actually it's an honor to take your session thank you it's my uh, honor it's very helpful for us yes thank you Uh, this is our first session for swat but okay. actually we have a brief idea but um, this is our first session like um, uh, an um, dignified person and experienced person saying us about swat analysis that's yeah. actually our advantage sir so that we can learn lot of things thank you so much thank you so much 
<clears throat> so if you want to reach me out, uh, you can just note on the slide. Uh, I have my own email ID and mobile. And, uh, you know, if you want anything to share with me, um, we are your knowledge management partner. This is only a Skill India initiative, what we have been doing now in a number of uh, education institutions. Uh, and other uh, yes, sir. Student has taken a screenshot of the slide so that they can contact you in case of any uh, doubts in the future. So uh, really thank you so much, sir, for uh, sparing your time for our students. Uh, and they like the part connecting themselves with the subject, uh, you, like uh, identifying their own strength, weakness. It is like uh, they have, uh, they had a very good uh, time. So it is, was very subjective at the same time, very practically connecting personally to them. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. So you, ma'am, ma ma speaking? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's me. So, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. I should love to congratulate uh, you, faculty team, for providing me this opportunity. And uh, so it's a pleasure, sir. Please. It's a goodness of you to uh, sit through all two, two hours and to coordinate. I'm sorry that uh, a good number of people would have been benefited by this, but I think only five, six people are. Anyway, this good thing and to reach uh, the uh, target. Uh, uh, people uh, with this learning spine. Yes, so, sir, like uh, it, it's like you know, it's like it's even uh, productive for me also. So I have heard this uh, concept after a long time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So thank feel you, free to uh, no, feel free to induct me into your programs, and uh, I, I love to associate myself whenever uh, uh, I feel uh, you know time. I can definitely uh, entertain all of you through this knowledge sharing and knowledge sharing is one such uh, area which I like most and love, I love most. So that's what. So convey my greetings to all your faculty members and my regards to Sivik Krishna sir, the executive director. So I think uh, uh, he might be also online. I don't know. Uh, Sivik Krishna, if you are there on uh, online, I, I... Actually, sir, is in an official meeting, sir. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, that's the reason why like, uh, I was uh, sitting with the students. Okay, okay, I, okay. I shall surely convey uh, regards to him, sir, from your side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you, sir. All the, all the best for all of you uh, for uh, your entering success in the examinations as well as in employment uh, trials. Be confident. Thank you, sir. And uh, I would like to extend my thank you to Mr. Upendra also, who has been in the session for a while. Upendra, are you there? Yeah, thank you, Upendra, for your very patient listening. And uh, your, your feedback is again important for others also and for me. Uh, can you can you uh, uh, speak uh, uh, two minutes? Uh... It's a wonderful session, sir. Uh, I think it's a concept from strategic management. I teach that paper to our MBS guys. Uh, but this is my first experience. Uh, I think it can be useful to a uh, person also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, if you correlated uh, this concept uh, with the company, I think the students can understand more. No, that's uh, because the, 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 the topic here is a personal SWOT analysis. Okay. It's not something to do with uh, SWOT analysis the companies. So this is completed. The design is a business communication model and uh, this is called personal SWOT analysis. How to develop the tool uh, in terms of your personal assets. Okay. That's it. So this is not something related to business. It's only related to your own personality uh, dimension. That's it. Is the talk the difference is between strength and the talent, natural talent of an individual? Sir? Both are no, no. Strength, the, the, the talent itself is a strength, you know. So you, you, you need to identify, I mean, that's my question is, uh, have you identified your talents? That's it. One thing is you realize yourself, uh, that is your talent and somebody else will be, uh, uh, you know, saying that, the, oh, you have a talent here. See, you don't recognize yourself. That's the point. Sometimes I fail to recognize my, my talent or sometimes like I may overinflate myself or undermine myself as such. So if I hear a positive comment or negative comment from a peer like you, I can fine tune myself. Am I clear what I'm saying, Upendra? Yeah. That's it. So talents are strengths minded. But then are you identifying these talents as your strengths? That is it. So do you have the talent, real talent in you? Are you weighing your talent adequately? Well, that's it. 
you may over inflate or undermine we don't know depends depends on the context see when you are working with fools uh, sometimes i feel wiser am i clear what i'm saying say all the clues come here and you know, i'm wiser than uh, x y z because they are fools so when i'm working with some wiser than uh, people wiser than me i i turn out myself to be a fool so given the context and given the functionality you have to audit yourself honestly that is the exercise where swot analysis helps friends that is what the uh, swot analysis tool is all about thank you upendra for your very uh, last question sir only last question so in your observation what are the weaknesses that you identified in mba graduates or pg dm graduates and what's your strategies to overcome those weaknesses the first point is uh, the the learning part of it taking things easy number one and number two is communication skill number three is analytical skills because business wants a uh, uh, lot of good analytical skills so in it is often being branded as that you know when you circulate uh, case studies in the classroom they don't do uh, honest uh, homework so the, where are the opportunities for them to uh, link themselves to the business scenarios so what happens is they lack analytical skills that is e- easily floated out when they enter into interviews communication skills and they are not good enough in designing their own resumes for the client and they float out uh, uh, you know deliberately poor in terms of personal interviews these are the critical comments made out by the recruiters because they lack communication skills am i clear what i'm saying oh. so knowledge skills and attitudes they don't have attitude to learn because they, the the two years to stay is a productive time for them to complete the 24 into 7 on learning this is the competitive arena today gone are those uh, ester years sitting keep quiet and all so nothing is completely learned through the campuses <laughs> learning is a completely your own uh, you know uh, what you call paradise see uh, sitting in a classroom you don't want to learn much uh, go with internet sources and grow with a lot of uh, sources of learning today made available so are they fine tuned to have this kind of learning scenarios and all or do they have the motivational levels so these are the concerns so if they can identify where they are lacking they can easily plug them that is my point i don't know how you accept me or not so you also have a very varied uh, you know experience with uh, the students for the 10 15 long years i think you will be in all position also to you know share your own points what are the weaknesses the uh, uh, prospective management functionaries thank you thank you sir thank you upon madam uh, for such a wonderful talk thank you ma'am yes ma'am thank you sir thank you thank you so much so i leave uh with a note that you please have i think i uh, i understand that you have learned a lot and put it in practice and that can help you to just it is only you know a de- i mean define yourself nothing else you know honestly do that and it can help you let's see what best you can do out of that Thanks a lot once again for all of you friends and Uma ma'am for being with me. Thank you. Thank you so much sir. Thank you sir.